So, Paul. Yeah, hey, Anna. What computer games have you played this week? <laughs> okay, so uh, we're doing this. Anna and I are doing this show because James is in the hospital. Um, he had a high blood pressure incident. I don't know any of the details, but if you would like to support him, I don't think he has any health insurance, so he's kind of in a bad way right now. Uh, you can send him money on his PayPal, or you can subscribe on Patreon, but that's going to have a longer term payoff. So uh, if you've got some spare money that, you know, you like Seamus' work, want to support him financially, send him some money on PayPal, and he'd really appreciate it. He didn't ask me to do this. We just were volunteering because we wanted to help him out and give him some content this week. He should be back on Monday, but he won't have been able to work all weekend, so we're putting this together. So video games. Here we go. I'm Paul Spooner. This is my wife, Anna. Um, I'm normally the co-host of the show with Seamus, and uh, as I explained this week, he's out. So we're going to talk about video games. Our, our first video game experiences. What was your what was the first video game you played? The first video game I played was the Mario on the original Nintendo that we had at my grandparents' house. Mm. And my grandparents lived in front of us. So when I get down there, I could play Mario. And I beat it through on the normal, and then I beat it through on the hard. Now, I didn't well. know there was a hard mode for Mario. Is that How does that work? The little is it Super the Mario? Goombas turn into those hard shell black turtle things. Really? I don't know the name of them. Do you, so like you have to beat the game and then when you play a new game after you beat it? Yes, after you beat oh, it, wow. you can after you beat the game and you defeat Bowser for the final time, then you go back and you can play it again. And then the Goombas turn into these little super hard that you cannot yeah, yeah. kill. You the, can't kill the them. Hard, the black helmet guys mm-hmm. or whatever they are. You can only launch them down the pits. Right, the right. Pit. Yeah, I remember those. I didn't know there was a New Game Plus. That's really cool. It was it was in the original one. So until you restart the system, or how does that get cleared? To... So it goes through, goes to the end. It's been a long time. <laughs> it goes to the end. You beat it, and then it, the title screen pops up again. Yeah. And then you hit play, and it's difficult. Right, right. But I don't think it saved that. I believe as soon as you turned the console off, right. you had to restart. Okay. Because I don't okay. remember it being saved at all, ever. Right. The wow. other. So you beat that I as did. well. I did. I did when I was about, I want to say seven, maybe seven or eight. Wow. Yeah. I was I was not good at Mario Brothers. <laughs> we, we also played it at my grandparents' house. But unlike your grandparents who lived just like next door, my grandparents lived in Tucson, Arizona. And we were out in California. So it's like... 500 miles away or whatever Mm -hmm. um and so we would play when we got there but i don't think we ever made it past like world four or five um yeah it was never really a priority for my parents either they're like stop playing video games visit with your grandparents so maybe they had a point Mm -hmm. Uh, my first video game i played was on the i think it was a commodore 64 it was some kind of really old computer that my dad had um and it was called striker i think s-t-r-y-k-e-r I've talked about this on the show before about um, this game, but it's basically like a little helicopter game where you move up and down and you can move right and left, but it's also an auto-scroller, so like the, the terrain would scroll underneath you as you were going. So you just kind of control your position on the screen. You're trying to shoot stuff and drop bombs and then you get to the end and like rescue people from a hotel or whatever. Um, but that was probably the, the first one I played. And then the first game that most people would recognize that I played was Commander Keen. We used to actually, my dad, when he came home with his work computer growing up he had commander keen on <gasps> his laptop yes and so i got to play commander keen i sucked at commander keen. Like, <laughs> i may have been really good i'm you're much really good better at Mario. with the controller oh it's, it's a controller. controller yeah interesting i play with the controller and the little arrow move around button and the a and b D-pad, so sure. much better okay. than i do with my fingers on the computer pad i feel like when i have the keyboard you have all these extra buttons and if your hand slips or moves you all of a sudden you're hitting the wrong button right right oh interesting yeah, we'll, we'll get back to the controller later in the show, because I know you played Hollow Knight on I the controller. I did play Hollow Knight on yeah, the computer, yeah. and then I played it most recently on my brother's Xbox, and oh my gosh, it is so much easier to play on the Xbox than it is on oh, PC. Really? Well, if you're playing with the keyboard and the mouse, there are so many extra buttons and so many ways to kind of mess up, and if your hand is not in the exact same spot, you just mess. It just messes you up, and when, you have the, when you've got the controller... It's just so much easier. All the buttons are right there. You just, if you need to go to something, you just slide your thumb over and you hit that button really easily. Or if you need to like hit the, but you hit a button with your thumb and then grab a grip with your other hand. It's so much easier. So you ended up playing that all the way through. Did you beat Hollow Knight? I did not play it all the way through. I ended up giving up because I, I ended up buying a controller for our computer 
And then the controller, the kids dropped it a couple of times or something happened to it. And then the grip stopped working. And so it became just a nightmare to play. Oh, and no. so I ended up like giving up on it. Um, you, I, did, you did beat it though, didn't you? No, I didn't. You, I got to, did. I got to the, um, I, I used the dream nail and I got into the king's mind where you play and you're driving around and that you get to where the king is and you have that final scene and then you get out. That's where I had got stuck because you have to have so much dexterity and the mm-hmm. jumping and the warping and then all of that. The skill level was together. exceeded the input. You couldn't Exceed, do it on the... I couldn't do it on the key. I could not do it with the keyboard. I yeah. had to have a controller and my controller broke. And so I was just sitting there. I tried a couple, I tried probably a dozen times with the keyboard oh. and to no avail. And I gave up. Yeah. So I didn't actually, I didn't actually beat it. Wow. But you did beat Ori in the Blind Forest, right? I did beat Ori in the Blind Forest. That one was not as difficult. A controller probably would have been much easier, but you can play that with the keyboard without too much trouble. And I, I did play a little bit of Hollow Knight and a little bit of Ori, but nothing nearly as much as you did. Mm-hmm. I think I barely got to the... I got to the tree, that part in the tree in Ori where like the water comes up or whatever. Yeah. Is that, is that That's really hard. Oh, okay. I just I remember, and I talked with Susie about it, because she's... And I played, that was one of the games that we actually played. So, so for the listeners, Susie is my sister. Go ahead. And she remembers, we had talked about playing, and she was like, yeah, I died so many times here. And it's just, and it's kind of embarrassing, because it really, Ori, it remembers how many times you die. Oh, it does? It saves yeah, that in your save game? Somewhere. And it's like, I died probably over 300 times in like oh. playing the game. So it was a little embarrassing. Wow. But wow. I did beat it. Yeah, I I didn't keep track of. I should probably I should probably not look up how many times I died because mostly it was right there in that tower. And I I finally beat that section. and I'm like, okay, I'm done. I beat it. I beat the game. I'm doing other things. Oh, that's such a bummer because it gets so pretty after that. Oh yeah. And after you beat the tree, all the water cleans up and the world completely changes and all oh, of a sudden it goes from kind of this dark and dreary landscape. Yeah. To very very beautiful. The whole mm. game is very very pretty. Hmm. But mm. I think it gets even prettier when you go back to places where you were before and the water is clear and you can swim in it. And yeah, that is yeah. so beautiful. It kind of transforms the, the landscape. Mm-hmm. Kind of like in um, Hob. Did you ever, you played Hob? I, I didn't play Hob. I no. played Hob just a little bit. Um, I got to the desert and I played a bit at the desert. But every time I would get on, the kids were like, I want to play. And so I had to kind of compete with them for time on or on Hob. Yeah. It also will only play on one of our computers. And so right. we could only get it on one computer. Yeah. So it's like only one person can play at a time. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I played Hob all the way through. I beat, I almost hundred percent of it. I was missing one of those, those purple butterfly things. And, um, I started reading a walkthrough and it's like, okay, here are all the locations on the map. And then here are all the dungeons, but the dungeons don't show you, like on the world map, which ones you've picked up the butterflies in. So I'd have to go back through all the dungeons and like check all the spots and see where I missed it. And I was just like, oh, I'm not gonna. It's not that important to me. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna go find the last butterfly. Right, right. I'm completely happy without doing that. Yeah, exactly. So I'm missing that uh, whatever the the ancient garb is. But yeah, Hob was Hob was a really cool. I I really like the what so. Back in the day, remember I made that script, the um, the masonry script that makes like bricks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like Hob reminds me of that kind of thing because it's like it all fits together. It's got all those masonry bits and all the mechanical bits and they all like mm-hmm. interlock and then like separate apart and, and realign and interlock with other things. And right. it's just like I love that, the geometry of it and like the, the that aspect of like the design of Hob. I don't actually, I mean the game was fine. It was, it was a decent game. But like that interlocking geometry aspect was just like oh i loved it so much oh it was another beautiful game and yeah just so well done and so many little things thought out well and even going back it's got one of the things i love the little non-aggressive animals in the game i think mm. they're really really cool the yeah, one yeah. one of my favorites is there's this cat creature that has a rose at the end of its seal or maybe a tulip yeah. and i really like that particular creature and then it also has another creature that is something that I had actually come up with a design for similar to independent of the game. And then it came years in years before years before. And yeah. I called it a Skype. And it was this little kind of like frog thing that had petals and they would grow. They would, um, they basically to reproduce, 
they reproduced more like a jellyfish. So they would actually start as like a plant, and then as they grew up mm. and flowered, the flowers would pop off as these and fly animals away. and fly away. And yeah, so it's it kind of like a, a, almost like a tadpole with, with butterfly with wings. With butterfly wings. And these creatures exist in Hob, and it was so entertaining. It was to so, be like, yeah, it was so similar. Like, oh my gosh. The first time is, we saw that, it was like, what I, that's the thing that you drove. Like, how, mm-hmm. did, they, how did they do that? So it was really cool that somebody else came up with the same idea and then actually manifested it in a gay computer game. Yeah, very cool. That was really fun to see. That was really fun. Man, speaking of beautiful games, The Witness, you played The Witness a little bit, right? I started The Witness. I did not get very far. Um, But you beat it all the way through, correct? I did. I beat The Witness. Did you find all the little hidden secrets too? Um, I started to go and pick them all up. The Witness does have a map of like all the locations for all the things. I think I did, actually. I think I did 100% The Witness. Um, it doesn't have, like, an achievement for it or whatever, but there's the 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 pool in the middle of the map is a map of the island, and then there's, like, little flowers that open up when you've found a recording, mm-hmm. and there's fountains that turn on when you've unlocked, a like, one of those lasers. Right. And uh, it's just like, oh, so, so pretty and so well integrated. Right. The same kind of thing with Hob. Like, the Hob, the geometry is well integrated. And, like, in The Witness, like, everything's just, like, super tied together. Right. Everything, you do one thing and it does something else. And then you do another thing and it does something else. And everything is connected. Nothing is random. Nothing is just. Right. There's no extraneous, thing. extraneous elements. Yeah. Yeah. And even things that you think are, it's like, oh, well, there's all this landscape or whatever. But then, like, you stand in a particular place and, like, that's part of the game, too. Like, it was there on purpose. Just, oh. And, like, and it does that in the game, but it also does that in your mind because you're learning all these rules and you're learning the language of the puzzles. Mm -hmm. It's just so, oh, so good. The Witness is so incredible. I I made a video about it, actually. I wrote a little, um, like, a little poem, kind of. Or, no, I didn't write it down. It was extemporaneous. Just like I was, I was playing the game. Anyway, that was a, that was a really good game. The Witness, Minecraft. We both played a ton of Minecraft. Yeah, you start originally started playing Minecraft when it first came out, and I couldn't even watch you play it originally. It made me so sick to watch you. Like, oh, just like I actually, motion sickness. The motion sickness. It made me get motion sickness. But I was also pregnant with our first child at this time, and then I I went ahead and I just was curious, so I started playing, and I found that playing it, I didn't actually get as sick. Mm. And so I found I was able to play it and really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed being able... It's one of the fun things is actually being like one of the original players, like or like playing the original Minecraft game. And then... No, this is before it, it was infinite, right? Right. This is before it was infinite. You had a set structure of things. You had only like... You had like, what, 20 different blocks? Yeah, there were very few different types of blocks. And it was really... It was really cool to be able to go from that. And then every time something new came, it was so much fun to be like, okay, now there's this, now there's that. And it was really, mm. really enjoyable. One of my, I think my favorite ones was, I think when they finally got glass, glass yeah. became a thing. That was really exciting. And then when they, they got the glass panes, mm. that was really fun too. Yeah. They had glass blocks from very early on, mm-hmm. but I, I think you couldn't make them. Like you could only find them initially. I don't remember very I forget well. too. So, but but it was, glass, it they added glass panes afterward, and mm-hmm. then it's like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Minecraft, we played, I, I don't even know, thousands of hours probably. A very, very long time, considering yeah. that we started playing 12 years ago, basically, yeah. at this point. Yeah. What a classic. What a right. good game. Minecraft. Okay, so another old game that we played, Hammer Fight. That was like a... I remember. You fly around. You're this little thing, and you have a chain connected to a weapon, and you have or a this, stick or, or a, a hammer stick or whatever. Or something. Yeah, it was a physics game almost. Yeah, and you had and you had to like move your mouth in a circle and then basically smash your thing into another thing to break it. And it was fun. I didn't ever beat the game. I just played for fun for a little bit. But I believe you did end up beating it. I did beat it. Yeah. I, I thought you got pretty far, didn't you? Mm, didn't you I get to the, so. the arena and you were playing in the arena? Maybe you played in the arena on my my game i might have just played on yours i don't know if i ever had my own account Mm, i don't remember making my own world yeah yeah no we did i thought we did play together dude is there multiplayer and i can't remember if there was multiplayer it was a while ago yeah there was a long time ago i remember going down in the you go down in the worm hunt right the worm hunt go down in the the pit and they just like throw a bunch of bombs down there and all your buddies like dive down there and die there's there's a huge explosion of stuff physics stuff like at the end of the game and then you have to like very 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 quickly grab the gems before they fall into the abyss fall off the bottom of the the world and you can't get them anymore (laughs) you're like oh goodness 
What a game. That was such a funny... It was almost like a like an experiment, right? Mm-hmm. Like a little class project or something. Right. But it was a whole game. It was, you know, 10, 15 bucks or something. I think it's still for sale. Space Chem. I played a ton of Space Chem. You played I don't Space think, Chem all the time. I, I didn't you... play it at all. I could not get into it. Yeah. I did not. My brain just doesn't work that way. It's uh, It really changed the way I thought about efficiency. It's It's almost like a coding game. It's like a game about building systems, building like... Oh, but there were so many tricks. I, I hundred percented space chem. I got all the all the puzzles or whatever, and um, and I I don't think I ever looked up a tutorial on how to do it until after I'd beaten the level. So I'd like I'd beat a level, and then mm-hmm. sometimes I'm like, oh, this is not a good solution. I would go and look up a tutorial, and they'd right. be like, oh, you know, here's like the optimal mathematically optimized version or whatever. But Andy played, and you guys kind of compared. Yeah, frequently. yeah, yeah. It's got that great histogram mm-hmm. thing where like. You show up on histogram, and the histogram is every player in the world. Right. And the, but then there's also your friends. It'll like put your friends on the histogram too. And that was so fun because I would go through and be a level or whatever, and Andy beat it before me. And then I'd be like, okay, well, like he he beat me on this one, but I beat him on that aspect. And then like go back and try to figure out how to beat the other one. Yeah. Um, that was a lot of the Zachtronics games were like that. But I think the fr- I think his. <sighs> The way that they go together is very similar, right? Like all the Zactronics games, uh, Exapunks. Um, did you play any Opus Magnum? Mm-mm. Uh, Opus Magnum, Exapunks, Infinifactory? No, I haven't. I don't think I have played any of the games like Space Chem because I just could not get into them. Yeah. They just were never it's not, a, an not interesting thing. to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of the games that aren't interesting to one of us, you played a ton of Slime Rancher. I did play at Slime Rancher. That was really fun. You go around and you basically collect these slimes and then you sell their poop. <laughs> it's like they call them ports, but it's it's slime poop. Yeah. They ingest things, they crystallize it, and then it comes out of them. And it was really fun because the it was also a very cute game. It was very, very cute. The whole thing was pretty cute. The one thing that I never really liked was when they would eat chickens. It just was a little unpleasant. <laughs> or when they get angry and then they want to eat you. Oh. It's like, oh, this is a little weird. Hmm. But it was really fun. And uh, it had some really cute aspects. And the world was really fun. And there were a lot of hidden whimsical, things. Kind of very a, whimsical. Yeah. Very, very whimsical. And and it was really, it was really cute. I really enjoyed that one. Hmm. And you beat that all the way through? I did. I did not um, it's had a couple of updates and I haven't played those. Oh, okay. I only played through the original game. There are now like these silver slimes that you have mm-hmm. to go and you go into a mini game and you get the silver slimes and they do things. There's also these saber slimes and I don't, I haven't played with saber slimes either. Like I, saber tooth or mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, okay. saber tooth. And you get special things from that world. It's another mini game in the game. Hmm. And Leia, our daughter has played it and she's She's beaten all of those things. Oh, really? I don't know if Leia's beaten the game or not. I've gotten to the very end. She beat the side content anyway. Yeah, I kind of... It was a little funny because at the end, you kind of feel like you're going to you're gonna get off the planet and go to a new planet. Hmm. And you get to the end and it's kind of like, here's to the great adventure of being in love. Have fun with my farm. <laughs> So it was interesting because huh. there's this guy that you follow and he's got little things and you, you can read them and it's the backstory. And then you have your backstory and that all kind of comes apparent. And um, There's like a little story woven in there. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So it's kind of almost like it's a little mini love story hmm. at the same time, or at least I read, maybe I read that into it too much, but that's what it seemed like. Sure, sure. So, but you get, it gets so epic toward the very end and then you're kind of... Love stories are great and everything, but it's like I was really hoping for some like giant blasting off to space moment. Sure, sure. And it and it didn't like happen. at the end of Subnautica or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was because you get into this like you get into this ancient temple looking thing and you do some other things and it's just been really fun. Huh. I haven't played like since I beat it though. Yeah, it's been a while. It, that's an older game. Mm-hmm. But um, it's it's more the kids really like it. And they play frequently. So speaking of another older game that you haven't mm. played in a while, Chime. <laughs> you played many hours of Chime. And I think we started playing Chime because Shamus actually recommended it. Yeah, I think so. I think he was playing it, and then Paul bought it, and then I started playing, and I just found it very hypnot- like hypnotic. It was very fun to play, and it was very interesting. Like that's that's one of the ways my brain works. I like to. I'm very visual, 
And Chime was really fun because it gave you this complex board and then different pieces and you had to fit it in because I do like puzzles. Mm. Like I really like to play with puzzles and things where it's like you have to find the right piece and the shape. And I see negative space pretty easily. Mm. Not everybody can, but I do see it very easily. Sure, I took you some trained art. yourself to do that. Yeah, I took some art classes. If you're looking for an art book that you want to learn to draw, drawing on the right side of the brain, it will change your life. <laughs> it really does because yeah, it yeah. really opens up your mind to seeing things in a proper way and in a different way and in an artistic way. And so I feel like that having done that and then also feeling like I'm kind of naturally artistic anyways, mm. that chime was really fun because it was kind of giving you that idea where you had to like do the, the different negative spaces and then you had to weigh it in the balance of, is it worth putting this difficult piece here and blocking myself out of this space? Or taking more time because it was also timed, which right. made it very complicated right. too. So you also had to weigh in each each decision had a weight to it, mm -hmm. which was really fun too. I think that played into the playability of the game. Yeah, because yeah. you could go on and they had an infinity mode, but it was never quite as enjoyable as the timed modes. Mm. The pressure it helped you to it gave you a, a decision point, a value mm -hmm. to your decisions that you don't get otherwise. Right. So when you did actually get a good one and you made a good decision and you started to clear stuff, then it gave you that sense of it, the feedback loop, the right. positive feedback loop started right. to feed in. Yeah. I'm surprised you never really, like you got involved with the witness just because that's very similar, you know, puzzles and yes. visual, visual, uh, not quite manipulation in the same way, mm -hmm. but like, uh, processing visual information. I think it goes back to the fact that you beat it already. I'm oh. very competitive. And, <laughs> and you had done so well and already beaten the whole thing. I see. And this goes back to before Paul and I were married. And we one of the first consoles my parents bought that was at our house was the GameCube. Mm. And one of, the, one of the games that I really enjoyed on the GameCube that we got was Zelda Twilight Princess. And I was playing it and I was probably 15 or 16 and then my little brother was playing it and he was about eight or nine at the time as well and I was a little bit further ahead of him in my my game and he was a little bit behind and then one weekend I was gone I think on summer camp or something mm -hmm. and I get back and he is lay, like leagues ahead of me and I am so pissed because I was kind of felt like we were walking through this together mm -hmm. I deleted his world what and then I never played again no I was the meanest. You're such sister. a terrible sister. I know. He's 21 now, and he still remembers, and he still tells me about things. Like something will happen, and he'll be like, "Yeah, I would never delete my <laughs> this person's world." And it's like things. he's still sore about um, it. He is so sore have about you, it. Have you actually apologized? I apologize sorry. every time he brings it up. I'm like, <laughs> I am so sorry. I was so childish. I cannot believe that I did that. Wow. Well, like it was bad. Yeah. That was one of those moments. So I think you were still a child. You're both still children, though, right? I mean, I'm nine years older than he is. I really yeah. should be able to, like, behave better. <laughs> oh, no. So. Oh, man. Well, um, speaking of games that we both played, mm -hmm. Shovel Knight. Oh, Shovel Knight. I think, I think you beat it. I think I didn't. You did not. I beat it. Yeah. Um, but I feel like we played it together, possibly. It might have been one of those games. We played several games together where if the... You'll be the moving around and I'll be the guns. This is how we beat... Um, Good Robot. So yes. we played Good Robot together and I moved around and you were the guns. And that worked out really, really well. And I feel like we might have done that with Shovel Knight in particular because there's a lot. there was a lot of complicated mechanics about it. And it's another game that if you can play it with a controller, I recommend playing it with a controller. Right, it's, right. It was made, it was really built. It's a platformer and it was really built for a controller. I'm trying right. to play. It's got simple inputs. Mm -hmm. so I'm trying yeah. to play it with a keyboard. Again, I feel like it's just that my hand will like move just a little too much and I'll hit the wrong button and you're just so frustrated. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Good Robot was, it was a very difficult game. Mm -hmm. Especially playing by, by yourself. By yourself, playing by yourself and trying to be like, okay, I have to shoot and I have to avoid things. And every shot yeah. is... You have people to be looking at two places on the screen at the same time, basically. Or more. Yeah. And more. And all of the shots are kind of like these bright colored... 
glowing things. So are yours and so are the right. other ones. So when you launch something, then some of them bounce. Yes. So if you launch something and it bounces off and it's bouncing around and it's bouncing towards you and you don't remember that it's your shot, you might try to avoid it and run into one of the enemy's shots. Right. So it right. was really helpful to play together where you just shot at things and I just had to avoid stuff. Yeah. We played it kind of like Lovers in a what Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, I think, mm-hmm. where it's a multiplayer thing. And so one of us just ran the mouse and the other one just ran the, the controls, like the directional controls. Right. And then when you're looking at the, at the screen, you can be, the mouse guy can just be looking at the enemies and what you're going to shoot. And the controller guy can just be looking at just the character and like avoiding shots and stuff. And I think we beat it without too much trouble that way. We, it was like our second or third try, I think, that we beat the game. Yeah, because we did that whole thing where we saved a file and then loaded it back in. Did we save Scum it a bit? Yeah, we did. Okay. We All totally right. did. All right. I, I, thought that we'd, I thought that we'd actually beaten it without saves coming, but maybe not. No, I think we died probably five or six times. Okay. But we got through it pretty easily together. Yeah, yeah. Five or six isn't too bad. Yeah. Yeah, it was a much more enjoyable experience. Uh just controlling one thing and we tried swapping it where right and it didn't it was very difficult paul was much better at shooting things and i was much better at avoiding things yeah for whatever reason it was really hard we they could not we did not do as well when i was shooting things and he was avoiding stuff right right yeah i don't, I don't know what I think it was but i think maybe it might have to do with you being colorblind oh yeah i think i'm not sure but i suspect that might be part of it hmm. so if you're the green the green red color blindness and if yeah, i'm yeah. shooting something and you don't recognize it because it's oh, a different color yeah. and you don't see it whereas i see i pick up on colors and i love color and and i think i picked up on that a little bit better i could yeah, differentiate between things you could identify right, right. the shape really really well mm. and i feel like because the shots were all just colors mm. they weren't really any shape in particular right, like right. they did have shape like some were oh, like arrows interesting. yeah yeah and some were like balls the and stuff. sphere or the chainsaws or whatever chain mm-hmm. blades or whatever but then you could the the actual enemies themselves were different shapes and very distinctive shapes yeah and but they were all black they were all black with with detail with right. color detail right. but with it was like details. it was a, a differentiating student be think between seeing the shapes and seeing the colors oh, that's fascinating i never picked up on that that's really cool <laughs> i just really thought cool. of it right now <laughs> yeah well hey that's awesome that's good that's a really good distinction i wonder if seamus was thinking about that when he was designing the game i'm gonna ask him next week yeah don't starve we played together don't starve together yeah don't starve together in real life either also we play that we don't starve together in real life <laughs> We're pretty good at it. We're pretty good at it. Because if Paul gets into a game, he's the type of gamer who starves himself. I feel like there are two types of gamers. There are the gamers that eat while they play and the gamers that starve themselves when they play because they just forget to eat. Mm. And Paul is the, I starve myself when I'm playing because I totally forget (laughs) about everything else. (laughs) Yep. Yep. So we played Don't Starve Together. That was... That was, again, years ago. We haven't played too much since, but the kids occasionally will play it. Don't Starve was a fun game, but it was so much more fun when you could play together. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was so much easier when you had help defeating things or fighting things, especially as the game got more complicated and the monsters got bigger and there were more of them and you Mm -hmm. didn't necessarily know when something was going to come and get you. Yeah. Although we never beat it, did we? We did not beat it. I got very, very close to the end game. I got to... You go into that one we did, portal. We did. Maximilian's, Maximilian's uh, the end game thing, right? Yeah. The end game, I believe, is there's a five level thing and each one gets a little bit different and a little bit harder right. and has a different mechanic to it. I think I got to the fourth world and ended up dying and I just couldn't bring myself to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. But we, yeah, we got really close, but I don't think we ever pushed through to, to finish it. I, I never really liked it too much. It always felt kind of... It's kind of a macabre game. Like the, the visuals. It's kind of Nightmare mm-hmm. Before Christmas mm-hmm. kind of style. Like, um, Yeah, well, and with the sanity thing and the issue. Like if your sanity gets yeah. too low, then you start seeing monsters. Yeah. Very, very nightmarish. Yeah, nightmarish. Yeah, it's kind of a nightmarish game. And uh, it just never... I don't know. I, I like to think of myself as someone who doesn't care too much about what things look like. Uh, but apparently it's not entirely true. I couldn't really get into Don't Starve. Yeah. It was fun to start playing with the kids mm. because they did not play well at all. It was hard, <laughs> it was hard to like play with them, but it was kind You're of so fun. You're so competitive. You enjoy crushing the children. No, I didn't. You don't. It's, a, it's You play together. It's right. cooperative. Yeah. But it was kind of fun because the kids, you, you felt like, You feel like this amazing person when you're playing with the kids. Like, yeah, 
I'm really good at this game. <laughs> like, it's, it's an ego trip, maybe just a little bit. Sure, sure. But it's also fun because then they think you're really cool, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of ego trip and things that the kids aren't very good at, uh, we played a lot of Starbound. We had played a lot of Starbound. Both together and separately. Mm-hmm. Starbound is fun. One of the things that I really like about Starbound and not everybody, I don't know if everybody's noticed this, but if you've played the game, when you get up to higher tier, when you get up to, the, so there's the, the five different, I think there's the five different stars, the gentle star, mm-hmm. the temperate star, the radioactive star, the frozen star, and then the really super hot star. Mm-hmm. And each each set of worlds around them gets difficult. The difficulty of them gets higher and higher as you get up there. The other interesting thing is that when you're in the lower tier worlds, the music is actually relatively like happy and upbeat and kind of subdued. Mm. And as you get further out, the music changes. Right. So depending upon what world you're on, the music changes and you can kind of get like, if I was to land on a particular planet or if you played a particular music and I wasn't looking, sure. I could probably guess what kind of planet you were on and what kind of star you were you were circling about. Right, right. Which is really handy when you're playing multiplayer and you just like teleport to this other player. Mm-hmm. You have no idea where they are. And right. you kind of instantly get this feel for like, okay, this is how careful I should be. Right. Well, the fun thing is the kids would teleport and they wouldn't have had any Oh, they have the support. right gear. They wouldn't have oh, no. the right gear. And so I would be at a frozen star or something and they uh-huh. would teleport to me and instantly start taking damage. The worst was when I was like in a cave somewhere. Oh, sure. Down and then the kids, would, like, the kids would teleport to me and they couldn't get out. Because you can't <laughs> teleport when you're underground. Oh, no. And so it was just like this funny thing where it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to get your stuff and I'm going to go back up and yeah. I'm going to put it on your ship. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to go to my ship and I'm going to make you some gear. <laughs> so you would just stay right there. Right, right. And then I would make them gear. The worst is though with the kids is like we would play together mm. and then like, Every other day, it seemed, they would start a new character. And it's like, why did you start a new character? I already gave you all the gear you needed for that one character. And now I have to do it again right. to play with you. So that it's you. Like, I have to outfit you again. Ugh. Ugh. So, but it's it's fun. Yeah. They're so yeah. silly. Well, it's also, it's fun. It's kind of fun to play with them because you see how much skill matters. Yes. Because, like, you would give them your gear, like, the high-tier stuff, mm-hmm. and they would still be dying on gentle stars or whatever, because they're like, <laughs> right, cause this monster keeps chasing me. Yeah, they wouldn't hit it, or they'd need a better weapon, or they just things. Or they, you'd go in, and you'd beat one of the bosses, mm-hmm. one of the major bosses, and they would just die. You'd have the same gear, basically. Right. And they would just keep dying, and right. you'd just be sitting there like, oh, goodness. Well, I just, I'll just stay here, and I won't die. Right. I'll just keep not dying. I'll just keep not dying. And they teleport in mm-hmm. and then like, Bleh! and teleport in. Bleh! Right. They die like four or five times Ugh. per boss. And I'd be like, okay, well, I just have to not die. <laughs> not very helpful. Not yeah. Either. But I think out of all the bosses in that um, big ape was the hardest for them. Like mm. they just have a really hard time with that boss. Mm. They've been practicing it, but it's, it's really hard for them. Yeah. There, we recently went on a Starbound kick. Mm-hmm. We've got, what, four, four we, copies we of Starbound now? We have four copies now? of Starbound. <laughs> so we can all play together we can at all, all the same play. time. Well, the kids frequently play all together. Right. And that's really fun. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then they'll go and they'll beat the bosses. They go, they'll go beat the ruin. Fight the Urkus or monster or whatever. Mm-hmm. Have they beat the ruin? They anymore? love the Urkus monster. Well, it's the easiest one. It is the easiest one, but I think what they really like about it is they want. they want that fancy weapon that you get at the end. They're really hoping to get the Urkus eye. That's ah, like their favorite weapon. Okay. <laughs> it's really funny. Because it's not even that great. Like, it's not that great of a weapon. But they just think running around carrying this giant eye is super cool. <laughs> it's, it's the thing to, to have. The mm-hmm. accessory of the week. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they have a lot of fun with that. And the the uh, the procedural worlds are just seamless. It's just, it works really well. It's yeah. a really well put together game. Well, speaking of procedural worlds, uh, RimWorld, we played... RimWorld, RimWorld is a very interesting game, and I never went to the dark side when I would play RimWorld. There's, what does that mean? Well, the dark side, like killing people and eating them. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> that's an option in that game. It's very unpleasant that cannibalism is an option. Um, I I have I did sell some prisoners occasionally. Yeah. If I I felt like it, but usually I would just heal people and let them go. Hmm. I just didn't like to. I felt like the game the game was more it was kind of like it was kind of, realistic enough that you felt morally compromised if you were going to do something like that 
Yeah, and I also, like, one of the goals I always had was to try and make all the tribes I could in my friends. Oh, like, there's always okay. one or two that you can't make a friend. Right, right. But the one enemies. Of the enemies. But one of the easiest ways to make them your friend is to <laughs> capture the guys that you have killed, base almost killed, with, like, oh, the funny thing, oh, my goodness. And when you would attack people, it's like... They, the arm is gone. Their leg is gone. You shot off their right ear. Right. Just like all this like very interesting details to it. But you can't tell. Like you look at the little person and you yeah, can't yeah. tell the that anything's gone. Right. But you read the description and the really funny thing is when you're, when you end up with a bunch of characters. Because I always, I think I always ended up with like, by my end game, I think I always had at least five guys. Oh, five yeah. to eight. Yeah. Typically. It's not hard to get 10 by the end game. <laughs> right. And and it was really interesting to do that. But I always would just like keep them. The other thing too is you get better medical experience if you mm-hmm. heal people and you take right. care of them. It trains your doctors up. Mm-hmm. You can, and they you get can really, practice really on, good. The, yeah. on the guys that you're yeah, so fighting. So we practice on the people that we were like, were trying to kill us. It's right. like, okay, well you tried to kill us. Now you get to be the yeah. guinea pig. <laughs> my medic my my low skill medic mm-hmm. you turn off doctoring for the high skill medic and then like have the low skill medic go and like try to heal these guys and get some experience <laughs> well yeah a lot of times i think usually that would be you could do that anyways but i mean like when you had an encounter it was very rare for my people to ever not come out scarred or right damaged right oh you were saying too. by the end of the game you could look at each one of your characters and they all have like missing legs oh everybody missing ears the really funny one was when they get Alzheimer's. Oh no! Like that was the thing. So this game was very random and had all this random stuff about it. But like they could get Alzheimer's, and so it's like Bob is wandering around in a stupor because he has <laughs> Alzheimer's. It's like you go to cause Alzheimer's. It's like oh thanks game. <laughs> It's really funny when they're like married and they have this like young wife or young husband. Sure. And they're trying, they're so depressed because they're, because their significant other has Alzheimer's. So it's like, yeah, it's it a, gives them both like this negative boost. A little and close to oh home. Oh goodness. Yeah. 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 It's, Yikes. It's funny. Yeah. And also uh, a lot of procedural generation. You beat the game, right? Oh, I beat the game several times. Several times. I beat it once and I think that was enough for me. I was like, all right, I see all the end game. Like it understand the systems but i always wanted it to kind of be to kind of keep going mm-hmm. like i wanted to see a glitter world i wanted to... oh right it would have been so cool to see a glitter world yeah just to see is it actually any better <laughs> what is it like what does that like mean? you crash land on the glitter world and it's actually like <laughs> it's it's the same idea right right like, like tribal warfare <laughs> but everybody has really nice weapons <laughs> <laughs> like the, the pirate section or whatever of the glitter world mm-hmm. anyway. <laughs> that would have been really fun yeah. Well, maybe someday. I think they're working on some of the games, but not... I think it's totally different genres. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so speaking of crash landing, Oxygen Not Included. We played mm-hmm. some Oxygen Not Included. We did. We did play Oxygen Not Included. And it was it was interesting. I, I didn't like all the game mechanics. Like the fact that they had to go to the bathroom all the time and they had to be super clean all the time. It was a little... I felt like that was a little over the top. Yeah, but yeah. it was really difficult to like make them good food that they liked. Mm. So it was like they were always unhappy because I had the very difficult time ever making food that was actually worth like that they actually wanted to eat. And then they would get sick, and then they throw up or they pee on the floor. It was like it's I I deal with this in real life. Right, with right. Children. Oh, happy Mother's Day. By happy the way. Mother's. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So it was like it was like a whole bunch of tiny children that you couldn't ever discipline out of their pickiness and spoiled demands well, for they luxuries. Would, they would eat and stuff, but I mean, if the toilet was broken, they wouldn't necessarily go and fix the toilet. You had to remember to like change the toilet out or do this or that. And it was just, it was really like, oh, this is really, this is just not fun because I deal with this too often. Sure. It was like a, a dollhouse simulating all the aspects that you didn't want to have to deal with in real life. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that's one of the things that I liked about RimWorld is there was no sanitation issue. Mm-hmm. You didn't have to play that. Like they would get sick, right? And and thing and there was blight and there were there were illnesses and things, but you didn't um, you didn't necessarily see it, and it wasn't like a big, it's it wasn't abstracted out. It wasn't like in your face, like they just vomited or they just right. peed. And then it's got like and the fluid right system. There. The fluid's it's like right running there. Running down the it's ladder. Running down. Now it's in. Now your water catch thing is <laughs> <Your> contaminated. <cistern. laughs> 
It's like, yes. and they don't, and the worst yes. part is like they contaminate the water system and then they keep using it. Right. And it's like, this would never work because uh, you can see it. It's just floating on top of the water. Right. And it's like, this is like, no. Uh, no. No, I'm good. No. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. I, for, for similar reasons. Uh, oxygen not included never really clicked with me. It, well, so when when we were playing it, or when you were playing it mostly, um, I was working as an engineer doing HVAC and plumbing, and so a lot of oxygen not included is just like air conditioning and plumbing stuff. You know, there's right. all these pipes and ducts everywhere, mm-hmm. and I was just like, I'm doing this for my job. Like, <laughs> so for both of us, you're like, right. I'm doing this for my job, taking care of these little people who can't contain their bowel movements, and I'm like, I'm doing this for my job, like right. doing air conditioning and plumbing and like trying to you know make a system that actually works and doesn't break down. I was like, is this just too too close to life, too close to real life? Right. But I guess if someone had like a job in retail and no kids, then mm-hmm. maybe Oxygen Included would be really fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, uh, mm. let's see. What else? What else have we done? The Witness we talked about. Planetary Annihilation. Um, did you ever get into that Mm-mm. real-time strategy? Did you ever play like Warcraft or? I played Warcraft. Uh, I, I grew, I played like the original Warcraft. And that was fun. And the, <laughs> the best part was when you would click on the orcs and they'd say dumb stuff. I don't remember <laughs> anything in particular that they used to say. But if you played the original one and you would hit your orc and they'd say things, oh, it was so funny. Ready to serve. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a cute little thing. It was also a really cute little game. Mm. You had these like short, round little characters that were so cute. And everything was kind of, all the edges were kind of rounded, and the trees were rounded, and nothing was sharp or spiky. Sure. So that was really fun. I did really like, I liked that game growing up. Hmm. But Planetary Annihilation, all hard edges and robots, and it's like, where's the fun in that? Not cute. (laughs) Not cuddly. (laughs) Didn't you play that once, and you and somebody else were on, like, a collision course, and then your planets smashed into each other? So one of the default maps is, I forget the name of it, but it's, it's one of the default maps is, like, you you start on two separate planets, or there are two. There are two. There are only two planets in the whole map, and in thirty minutes they orbit. They orbiting opposite each other on the around the sun. It, nothing like this would really occur in real life, of right. course. But like they're orbiting opposite each other around the sun. They're on exactly the same orbit, and in thirty minutes they smash into each other, and like the game's over. It's like that's it. You're done. Like there's nothing else in the system. There's no <laughs> asteroids. There's nothing. So right. it's just like this game where it's like, well, so it's a thirty minute long game, I guess. Um, but it was one of the default maps and you could just say like play a random map and so occasionally when we were playing multiplayer we'd be like oh I'll play a random map and it's like oh we're playing this game and we didn't really think about like <laughs> what's going on on the cosmic scale we're just like right. oh, build this thing and attack this guy and like artillery and, and put an emplacement over here and then it's like oh and the game's over I guess it, are you <laughs> dead too? you're dead too okay <laughs> alright well we'll have to remember not to do that again <laughs> we probably did that like two or three or four times we're just like ah oh. Why? Why did we do this to ourselves? But that was a fun game. I played, I don't know, maybe 40 hours of that. Just, uh, I really like the idea of the nested spaces of like the, there's the whole system and then like each system has a planet and like, and the planets can have moons and you can like move them around in the system with the engines and like that whole idea of like multi-level. I always wanted for their, so in the original game, they had no titans. They didn't have like the really super in, in planetary and in total annihilation, they were called Krogoths. They were like these super units. But mm-hmm. um, they said when they were making planetary annihilation, this is like a strictly like strategic game and we're going to make it like really competitive. There's this whole competitive scene that I never really got involved in. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, they're they like, we're not going to have Krogoths. We're not going to have super units at all. But then the community, what, like parts of the community were like, we really like them. We want to have those in the game. And so they made a separate game called planetary annihilation titans. And that one had the Titans in it. And I always wanted the Titans to be big enough so that you could put units on them and have, like, the Titans themselves be a battlefield. <laughs> Where, like, you, you know, you could, like, go over and attack the enemy's Titan uh-huh. and, like, take control of it or whatever. Right. Or something like that. But they never really got, like, to that level. And mm-hmm. I was always kind of hoping that, like... Or, like, the, the metal planet, you know? Like, the huge one that's got the giant super laser on it. And you can control that one. Did you... That was... That's the thing. It's like a Death Star. Oh, very cool. And uh, so, anyway. So, I always wanted, like you'd be able to build one of those Death Star things and then, like, the enemy... And you could be fighting on the surface of it. Like, kind of like the Death Star in Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. Where, like, you have a battle on the surface of the super weapon that's also doing something to something the, like... else. Yeah, something else in the world. Just, like, that multi multiple scale kind of combat. Right. But, uh, but it never really... That wasn't part of their vision. And mm. uh, so, sadly, that kind of fell by the wayside. Um, 
Creeper World 3. You never really played much never. of that. Never. I don't think yeah. I've played Creeper World ever. None of the Creeper World games? No. Uh, let's see. But I, I have played like Plants vs. Zombies and other tower defense things like that. Yeah. But I just never, I don't know why, Creeper World was just kind of like... I think part of it was it was just such an ugly game. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not yeah. very interesting. Yeah, it's, it's like, all computer. It's and, all programmer art. Yeah, so there's all these like little. You have these little squares, and they shoot the purple stuff that's just flowing over things. And right, it's like right. this is really like no there's nothing interesting to look at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, all very, all very blah. Yeah, I I really liked it just because of the systems and like. You're building networks and, and like the supply networks and stuff, mm-hmm. and like the the. It's um, got a lot of runaway. interesting ca- mechanics. The mechanics seem really interesting. Yeah, yeah. But I am so visual, and when it's kind of a boring game, but it was just kind of funny because what's like the thing about Chime, and I think mm. this is where they they got it off with with me and why I like Chime, is because they did have pretty colors. Mm. Like it, the shapes all had different colors, and the other thing too is each. So you had a different set of shapes for each map, and you had a different set of colors corresponding to each map as well. Mm-hmm. And and each different shape had a single color. So you had a set of shapes per map, and those only had a certain color. So if you saw the color, I could actually map on what the shape was. Okay. So I just had to see the color yeah. after a while. Oh yeah. And I didn't even you didn't have to, have think to about look it. at the shape itself. Not as much anymore. I could look. Right. I could see the color, and then I could put it where I wanted it because I could fit it into the puzzle. Yeah, yeah. The so. puzzle was a, a map of colors that you wanted. Mm-hmm. And so you could match the color to the color. It was like a it was like a yeah, painting roughly. almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of. Like you could map it out in your brain. You were solving it you were solving the puzzle with colors instead of solving it with shapes. Right. And so you were taking the shapes and putting them in Yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. I'd never Obviously, I've never looked at it that way before. <laughs> like, right. I'm terrible with colors. <laughs> well, I mean, we just think differently, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. Yeah, so Creeper World 3, you never... No, like, I didn't. Ugly it's, colors. It's ugly colors. But it's really no funny. Shapes. Our our four-year-old really likes it. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. He likes to play it. Yeah. And he's not too bad. He can beat the first level by himself. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is so much fun and such a cute little game and mm. just a joy to play if you want something that's relaxing. It's so much fun. Um, it gets a little boring, I think, because some things just take forever and so can be very time consuming. Mm. The mechanics are very time consuming and it kind of makes you wish that things could go faster and you didn't have to do all these things or you could hold more. Um, but it's really fun to go around and give people birthday presents and go fishing and to when your when your crops get ripe and you harvest mm-hmm. that's really really fun or you make a new thing that was really really fun yeah yeah you really got into the the relationship aspect oh the too. relationship aspect yeah I um, on one time I think on my longest running game I think I almost got full hearts with everybody I could. Mm. I mean, there were only a couple of people. I think Krampus and I think Sandy, who lives out in the desert. I think those mm-hmm. were the only two, just because they were difficult to get. They were more difficult to get to. Right, right. Yeah. And Krampus liked certain things, so it was difficult. It things was a little to bit get. difficult. Yeah. But the like, um, the dwarf. He was so easy because anytime you went down into the the mines, every time you go up, because he's always available. Right. You can always right. get to him. He's always there. He's always there. And so once you can get to him, you just if you get. Any gemstone, didn't matter like what tier, uh-huh. you give it to him, he'd be so happy. Right. And right. then you just go back to your house. Yeah. So it's like it was so easy to give him stuff. Sure. That it was very easy to actually get him to post hearts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. think I ever. Oh, no, no, I did. I, did I, you get married? I, I married Penny. Right. Um, But but I never really. Relationships aren't that important to me. So it, it, it never caught me in that way. It was kind of like, all right, this is an interesting, interesting mini game. But yeah, well, yeah, the nice thing is they send you, they send the you stuff, right? So you, if you had full hearts with people in the morning, you'd wake up and you'd have mail and it'd be something you need. Sometimes like you got batteries and gold and food items. Sure. So it was really sure. nice. It was nice to know people. And then you also got like recipes. Mm. Some of the recipes you couldn't get oh, unless right. you were friends you with them. them. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. You play it with the, with the girls sometimes. I have played with the girls a couple of times, not very often. Hmm. The kids are not the easiest ones to play with. <laughs> sure. Well, on some games, they're easy because it they're doesn't easier. affect the way that you... Like, the way that you play doesn't affect the other players so much. Right. Like in Starbound. Mm-hmm. Like, they can be dying and you're fine. 
Because you kind of have your own little account. And I feel right. like, and I, there probably is a way to do Stardew Valley, but you have the same money pool and everything's kind of yours. Right, and, right. It's all and you're shared. you're all the same. Your farm is connected. Right, and so right. So if they do something on the farm, then it affects you. Right. They build a building in the wrong place mm-hmm. or something. Or That's spend right. your money on something dumb. And it's like, oh, no, I was saving for whatever else. Or right. Spend all your with uh, gold on, you know, gold bars. Use them all to make a bunch of sprinklers or something. It's like, oh, why? I didn't right. need all those. It's interesting how some games are like that. Some games are, are harder to play with other people if the other people aren't kind of at your same level, your same skill level. Right. Or if they don't have the same goals in mind. Mm, yeah. Yeah. We played uh, we played Minecraft together, but I, we had some of the same problem there. <laughs> where... Well, we played Minecraft and it was that I would run off and just fight things and I'd mm. run into trouble. And you were like, don't go out into trouble. Like, stay here. <laughs> I'm working so hard for you to not die. Right. And it's like, it doesn't matter if I die. I'll right. Go you back didn't and get care. It. You didn't care about dying. No, I didn't. Because the I feel like a lot of the time we didn't, we haven't played a lot recently. Like, I don't think we played recently in a long time. No, it's been a while. But the, the experience mm-hmm. wasn't really a big thing when we were playing together. And, and so we ended up just, I just, it didn't matter. Like, mm-hmm. I think the main thing with Minecraft is when you die, you lose all your experience and that can be a very... That can be very disheartening. But now you um, you can... But back then, anyways, you just had your stuff. And you just had to go get your stuff. Right. The one game I never got into, and the kids haven't really gotten into, Mindistry. Mindistry. I, I think Mindistry is probably the game that I've spent the most number of hours playing. Other than Minecraft. Mm-hmm. Minecraft, of course, uh, has but- eaten up a ton. But you played Mind History with Luke, your brother, mm-hmm. and Andy as well? Uh, or did you just play with Luke? I, I think it may have just have been with Luke. Because you and Luke got into it. I think maybe Andy... Mm, I can't remember. I don't remember if Andy played at all. Luke Luke and I, though, we played together. And um, Mind History did get that thing of the multi-scale, the multi-scale system thing. Mm-hmm. Where, uh, especially in the latest, or the update 6 or whatever... Uh, where you can, you've got the world map, and then you've got the individual maps, and then you've got like inside each individual map, you've got all these networks and all these systems going on, and then like at the world level, you've got you can ship resources between different map areas. It's not quite as complica- complicated, but it's still it's still there. That game is still there, and so like that was just so engaging. Of like, okay, well, I'm optimizing this thing, not because I need it on this map, but because I need to ship these materials somewhere else and use it on that map and it's just like it was so good it was such a good such a good system and it was really pared down uh just to the stuff that you needed and it had just enough complexity that it was a challenge just enough spatial stuff it had a lot of um procedurally generated maps so there's Mm -hmm. just enough spatial complexity in the map generation that there was a challenge often of like oh how do i fit this i've got this factory and i know how to build it on like an infinite plane but in this particular map how do i build it and also build in such a way that it's defended from the enemies and just enough of everything like that that was so sweet such a such a good experience that was really fun yeah i probably played too much my industry but oh well another game probably played too much of satisfactory you never really got into that but i got to a certain tier and then i kind of was like uh because you would you'd get up to a new tier and then you'd find a new thing and it was really difficult because you'd set up your systems and you'd get it all kind of looking relatively nice and, and streamlined. And then it'd be like, oh crap, and now I need this other thing. And now it's going to get all messed up again. Oh yeah. And so it was just like cringe of like, oh crud, I have to destroy so much and I have to rebuild. Oh yeah. Because I, I started like doing the thing where I'd make a big platform and then I'd put everything in a nice line and mm. everything would be functional. And then it'd be like, and then... I had unlocked. To, unlocked a new thing, and then I'd have to do this thing, and I'd be like, "Oh, I can't, I can't do it again." Yeah, it it, it does have that aspect of requiring you to rebuild stuff. It, you don't have to rebuild, but it's if you're trying to make everything look nice and like be optimized and streamlined, then you really have to have you really have to be playing the game with the end game in mind. Right. You have to kind of. Like with the wiki open, right? Or even one of the tools, like a planning tool of like, all right, right. here's here's my end game factory and what it's going to look like. And even then, they keep releasing updates where they'll change how that works. Like I spent a number of hours, probably like 10, 15 hours 
building a whole supply chain, a whole a whole independent supply chain and factory that just built turbo motors. Mm-hmm. And so like I built this whole thing and like built it all into this factory and like got the whole thing running and like it wasn't the best design, but like it worked really well. And I had designed it just for that purpose. And then there was an update and they changed the requirements for turbo motors. Oh, and no. like what you need to build turbo motors. And there was just like, well, this whole fact, this whole, not even this whole factory, but this whole chain of factories that I built is they now like obsolete, out of balance and it's producing the wrong parts. And I'm going to have to like tear everything down. If I want to get back to having something streamlined and working, I'm going to mm-hmm. have to tear everything down to the metal and like rethink everything. Like all the rail lines, everything has right. to like be rethought. And it was just like, oh no, there was that feeling of like, all right, I'm not going to do it. And so I just like took the factory <laughs> offline. I just left the machine standing there, not operational. I was like, it's just abandoned. Like, I'll just leave it there. And it'll be fine. And I actually did end up using some of them later mm-hmm. to um, to process nuclear waste. And I need some parts for nuclear waste. So I'm just like, I'm just going to go in here, change a few things, like reroute it, put, dump it on a train and ship it off. And like, it'll be way more than I need, but that's fine. Like, I don't care. <laughs> it right. proved useful. And, uh, but yeah, that that's an aspect of Satisfactory that's not very satisfying. Like, it's really discouraging mm-hmm. to, to like unlock a new thing which is kind of weird because like you'd think that you'd want to i guess if the challenge of it is like building the factory itself then unlocking a new thing and having a reason to rebuild your factory would be really cool mm-hmm. but if you're just trying to like if you're just trying to get it working and like you finally get it working it's like all right cool now it works and then you unlock a new thing and it's just like Ugh, now i need this whole so other discouraged. thing yeah and it's yeah so complicated i don't want to do this anymore but the world is beautiful, and it was always fun to go and look for things and explore. And I think that was the part I really liked. Mm. And once you got up and you could make like a jet pack, then it was like the best thing ever. Because yes. then you could get to all these things that you couldn't get to before. Yes. And that was really fun. Have you played with a hover pack now? I haven't. I've seen you play with it, and it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> the hover pack is so good. Because then you can just, all you do is you just run, you just, you don't even run. You're just flying around, putting down power poles everywhere. Right. And like, and the enemies can't touch you. And, and you don't run out of fuel. And then when you get somewhere, you have, you've got power because you've been putting the power lines down. So it's just like this incredible. It's kind of weird, though, that it comes right at the end game. I guess it's, it's fine. I mean, like, that's, that's the end game thing. It's like, okay, now you can go anywhere you want and do anything you want. And, you know, nothing's standing between you and whatever your goals are. But, uh, yeah, the hover pack is, is pretty fun. Pretty fun to play with. Mm. All right. Well, looks like we're almost at the end of the list. Here it comes. The, the latest craze, Valheim. Valheim. Valheim! Valheim is also a very pretty game and fairly realistic game for the way it's made. It's kind of interesting. If you look at the rocks and you really look at them, you're like, you can see the individual pixels that they use to like compilate the rock. But when you get further enough, they, they cause the detail just kind of blurs together and it looks like a rock. It's amazing. Mm. Mm. There are so many little things about the game that make it realistic too. So another thing that I've discovered is like if you're kind of scanning, everything kind of gets blurry. And then when mm. you kind of like stop and you're really looking at something, it all clears up. Mm. And that's something that you kind of do in real life. Mm. And that's been really fun. Yeah. It's uh, the goblins are terrifying. <laughs> Finally found, I found some goblins and I fought a couple of them and they are so hard because I'm just at the bronze tier still. Mm. I just, oh, I just beat the elder and I've, got my first load of iron and i need to get all that working but oh my goodness i found this tiny little strip of plains mm. and it has this little goblin place little town or whatever little town and oh my goodness but i think the worst things are the death skeetos oh my god oh yeah death skeetos are the worst and you helped me get back my stuff i did when once. i went uh, across the sea on a boat mm-hmm. and i was like oh some planes that's cool i didn't know what i was doing like, oh, I'm going to go and see if I, how close I can get to the shore. Maybe I can shoot some of those big beasties. And then, like, <laughs> zip, wham, wham, dead in the boat. Right. Death skeetos. Oh. Oh, my gosh. They're so, they're so hard. Yeah. And you can't see them necessarily. And they're they move difficult about. difficult to see. They move really fast. Mm-hmm. And uh, hard to just block. Just a couple hits. Tons of damage. Yeah. Yeah. That is it. It's a surprisingly easy and surprisingly difficult game. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's simple. It's surprisingly simple, right? Like there isn't too much complexity to it. It's just no. like block, dodge, attack, uh, a few weapons, not a ton of different weapon types, mm-hmm. and then a few tiers. Like there's not a ton of tiers either. It's just it's so it's so optimized 
but yet also it's so difficult, like it's challenging. And I think part of the challenge is that it's not impossible to beat really high tier enemies at low with low tier equipment if you're really skilled. Like if right. you're really good at it, like you could beat a troll with no gear basically other than a bow. Oh yes. As long as you keep moving away from it and you have right. enough arrows. Right. So but and in order to keep moving away from it, you have to be aware of your surroundings so you don't mm-hmm. get stuck on a log oh goodness, or right. a stump or something. And so it's like it's this really simple game of like, oh okay, we'll just shoot the troll with arrows until it dies. Right. But but then like how but do you beware. not get hit? And, and, hit. and then, and then the, if the, the great wars spawn, come, yeah, exactly. Then you you gotta watch out for the great wars. Right, right. And the and yeah. the, the challenge lasts long enough that all of those ancillary dangers come into play at some point Mm -hmm. where you're moving backward and you think you're fine but then it's like oh there's a rock behind me and now i'm stuck between a rock and a tree and like i have to move forward to get out of the crevice or jump but i'm out of stamina and just like oh "Oh, no stamina (laughs) Stamina bar is so difficult to remember yeah yeah. you have to really be paying attention to it or you have to make sure that you've eaten enough food that it's big enough that you don't have to think too hard about it right right well it's long enough that you you're like, oh, I've got plenty of stamina. I'm going to go do this thing. And you're doing mm-hmm. the thing. And then you're like, you forget about it. And then you run out. Right. And then you're like, oh, now I'm really in trouble because I can't no, run stuck. anymore. I can't attack anymore. I can't block anymore. Right. I can't shoot anymore. Like all of my options have disappeared because I wasn't thinking about, I wasn't thinking ahead and planning for, for this moment. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. It really, it really punishes overconfidence. Yes. Really hard. And then you lose all your gear, you right? You die. Your gear. your gear is, it's there. You haven't lost it. You know exactly where it is. It shows up on the map, right? Yeah, it's like, taunting you. It's not lost. It's you know, <laughs> sitting right there being like, huh, how are you going to get back here? You don't have any gear. It's all right here. Right. And then you have to build. Yeah, yeah. So then you build backup gear. Yeah, well, it's just really funny. I don't build backup gear, but you really? have backup gear. No, I always just... I don't just run. I just run. And the worst part is I feel so dumb is I'll leave my base and I'll be like, crap, why didn't I eat anything before I left? <laughs> you eat some of your backup food. And so I don't bet eat any backup food. And then I'm like, okay, well, here I am with my three bars of stamina and right. no gear. And 25 health. Absolutely nothing. And right. 25 health. I'm like, well, I'm just going to go get my gear. Hopefully this works. <laughs> and it does most of the time. Most of the time I've been very successful, surprisingly. Yeah, yeah. And I'm much more cautious. I'm, I'm a much more cautious player. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and so I'll make backup gear. But then the kids are always like, I want to play with you. And right. so then they wear my backup gear. And then they die. And then they die. And then I go try to get their gear and then I die. And then I'm like, okay, well now everything is sitting over there <laughs> with nothing. Everything's really taunting me right. now. Right. Yeah. And it's like, oh, why didn't I make more? No, I did make backup gear. Why did I let my kids play with me on this game? Right? Oh, well, because it's a fun game to play with your family and friends. Right. Ah, yeah, I know. But it's, yeah. it's challenging enough that it's... Yeah, I won't let our yeah. four-year-old play with me. It's like, no, uh, no I don't want to play with you. No, nope. no, nope. you just die. And you leave things places and it's no. Right. You right. steal my stuff and you go and buy silly things at the traders. And then <laughs> I have no money and you died and you left it all over there. Right, right. Like, and and when he dies, it doesn't show up on your map. No. So you don't know where he died. I don't know where it is. Yeah. I don't know where anything is. Yeah. I was wandering around the swamps the other day. I'm like, oh, look at this. It's like two <laughs> tombstones. And... And you want to go pick up the stuff and take it back, but you can't because their inventory is completely full full of stuff that they picked up at camp and hauled out here into the middle of nowhere and then died with. It's like, why are you carrying all these rocks and (laughs) and all this? You got like three sets of pickaxes? Why did you do that? And like how many torches? I I eventually ended up just like taking the torches back to base, put them all in a chest. And then whenever like the chest is full, I'll just take all the torches out and just go and hit a tree with them until they all break. (laughs) Because it ups your, your club skill. Oh, nice. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, clubs and hammers or whatever. Maces. I think it's maces <laughs> skill or something. Yeah. And uh, and so I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to skill up with this stuff. Because they just, the kids will constantly make torches. Because mm-hmm. they're easy to make. You always have right. the materials for torches. And but then there's just like, there's all so the boxes are them. full of torches. Oh, oh man. Another funny thing I think is I like to have several bases. I like mm. to make a little base. Right. And, then, and the other thing I do is if I find an abandoned hut somewhere, I turn it into a mini base. Mm. And then I mark it and I leave stuff there. And then I go back to it if I ever go like through that space. Okay. And I feel like you are constantly like trucking all your stuff to your next base. To the central location. <laughs> central location. So your stuff is like constantly moving about. And then I get you get on my world and you start moving my stuff around. And I get back to like an old base and I'm like, crap, where is everything? <laughs> It's like when everything's gone. I organized it for you. You organized it. I put it in a central location. Right. And now I'm at my old base and I need it. And I it's not here. You consolidated your life into this tiny box. <laughs> right. 
Oh goodness. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think I've I, I beat all the bosses except for the last one. And there's no real reason for me at this point to beat the last boss. Like the stuff he drops, you don't need for anything else, because that's like the end of the content at this point. Um so I don't think I'm gonna try to beat him yet. What is we'll the see. last boss? The giant skeleton guy. He's the well he's the planes oh. the planes boss. Oh, and you haven't really have you haven't gotten dark metal yet though? No, I don't really need it. Is the other thing like I've got uh, Frostner, and you can make Frostner with silver. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I've got it max tiered out, and it's on par with the dark metal weapons. Mm. So it's like, well, I don't really need any of those dark metal stuff. I was thinking about making an Eichger. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Like the the pole arm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just so it kind of have like a sweep attack. Oh, nice. But um, yeah. So I think I'm I think I'm more or less done with Valheim for now. We'll see. <laughs> Were you staying up to five or six in the morning for a week? <sighs> yeah. you're done. Yeah. Two weeks. It's uh what it's been it's been just about two weeks now. And I've got hundred and twenty eight hours on it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so it's, like, yeah. it's a lot of it's a lot of online. It's a good time though. It's a very and like you said, very pretty. Very pretty, very enjoyable game to play. Mm, mm. I do not like the swamp biome. It's really creepy. But I mean, like, yeah. it's a swamp. It's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. There are no ROUSs, but that would have been really fun. Yeah. It would have been a really great reference, but it's okay. Yeah. Because yeah. they have, like, the the little fire guys. Yeah, yeah. The, That's um, kind of... Certlings. Mm-hmm. Mm. But they also don't have, like, quicksand or anything, so it's kind yeah. of nice, though. yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Quicksand would be horrible. <laughs> Could you imagine? Just How are you going to get your stuff back? You can't. <laughs> you can't. It's all gone. Long. It's the one place your gear right. just disappears. Well, what happens if you're, like, the, you're out in the ocean it, and the serpent comes and destroys your boat and everything? Does everything float to the bottom? Uh, well, the materials, a lot of the materials will sink, but your gravestone will float to the surface. And everything in it will still be in it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, I thought grave marker. <laughs> It would be nice if you could dive, you dive. If there was like a diving skill. That would be interesting. But there isn't. Right. It's not part of the Viking way, diving to the bottom of the ocean. No, I, I'm pretty sure they were afraid of the ocean a bit. Mm. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Well, the ocean is kind of scary. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, there we go. We talked about all the video games. Yes. And We've... if you if you will feel so inclined, please donate to Shamus. He is doing much better, but you know how expensive hospitals can get, especially if you don't have insurance. So keep him in your prayers and your thoughts, mm-hmm. and please donate. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, and we didn't read any mailbags this week, but if you have a question for the mailbag, the email is diecast at shamusyoung.com. And thank you for listening. Hopefully we'll be back to normal next week. That would be awesome. Say goodbye, Paul. <laughs> goodbye, Paul. <laughs> oh, we don't have the music. What are we going to play at the end of the... I don't know. Okay. I'm going to go check on everybody. I saw the girls, so I'm fine.